Inside Angular, we used reactive forms for ages, and during the last 10 years, I made hundreds of different forms using them. But nowadays, we have something better, and it is Angular signal forms. So by the end of this video, you will learn how to use them effectively to implement exactly the same functionality like with reactive forms. And just from the beginning, I want to mention Angular signal forms are still in beta. You can see it on the official website. But they are available inside Angular 21, and from my perspective, they are quite stable and they won't change a lot. So sure, you should not put them in production application, but you can already learn how they are working, because in the next Angular version, they probably will be already stable. Let's first check a typical example of reactive forms to see how we will transform it in Angular signal form. As you can see here, we are creating form group with reactive forms, and then we are binding with form control name every single input. Then we are using things like register form get username, question mark invalid, dirty touched to write some if conditions with validation. Reactive forms were actually good, but the TypeScript coverage was not the greatest. For example, here question mark in every single field is already not great. And inside TS file, we could define a form like form group, mark fields as required, add validators to specific fields, and we get the possibility to access our fields as RxJS streams with value changes, which is great because it makes our code more flexible as we can combine subscriptions from forms with other RxJS streams in the system. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp. We cover all our code with TypeScript to make it stable and clear. So let's implement exactly the same form with Angular signal form, and you will see that it is really great. So here you can see I have just a form without any form groups. This is just plain HTML. And here I render a select with the roles. Inside TS file, it is completely empty. We just have an array with two roles. So the first thing that we are doing is defining a schema of our form. And we are doing it just by defining an interface or a type. And inside Angular, they are naming schemas for the Angular signal form a model. This is why here, let's name it register model. And it is just an object with username, which must be a string. Then password, it is also a string. Email is a string. And we need a role ID, which will be a string. And this is already great because we can directly see the type of our whole form. Now inside our app, let's create this model. And again, model is not the same as a form. So here I want to write signal register model. And this is just a signal with the type register model that we just created. And inside we're throwing some initial data like empty username, empty password, empty email, and role ID will be one. So again, we're not even talking about forms yet. This is just a simple signal, nothing else. But after this, we want to create a register form. This is why signal register form. And we're calling here a form function, which is coming from Angular forms signals. And inside as a parameter, we're providing our model, which will be signal register model. So basically inside form, we're throwing our signal. And this is already enough, we created our form. So what is signal register form? As you can see, it is a field tree of register model. So now let's use it inside our HTML. We don't need any form groups or any reactive stuff here. We just need a submit function. So here, let's create a submit. And we will call here on submit function and we're providing inside an event. Here inside, I have an submit function with an event, and it is important to call event prevent default here. Because previously in reactive forms, we didn't need to write this code, but now with just normal submit, it is a must. Our next step is to bind every single field to our form. In order to do that, inside our imports, we want to add field. And as you can see, it is coming also from our signals. Now inside our HTML, on our input, we are creating a field attribute, and here we are calling signal register form dot, and we have access to our username. And as you can see, this is really TypeScript safe. We don't have any anys or just some random strings. We have just a reference on this specific input. And now we are doing exactly the same with all other fields, like email and password. 
And with select we can do exactly the same. It is a field and we are providing inside role ID. So all fields are already binded. This is why inside our on submit we can check values of our form. So let's write here on submit and we want to access not the form but our signal. Because basically our signal is a place where we are storing data. So here we have our signal register model with round brackets because we are reading a value of the signal. And now inside our browser we have a form, we can click register and here is our on submit and we are getting four values. If I am changing the values of the form and click register, you can see that our state was updated. So we successfully binded all values from the form inside HTML and it was really easy and is fully covered with TypeScript. But what about validation? How we can implement it here? And actually inside this form, as a second parameter, there is a function. And we typically name the first argument as a field path. And now inside this function, we simply want to call different validators for every single input. Like for example here we can call required and as you can see again it is coming from signals and we are passing here field path dot and we have access to our specific input. For example here will be username, we can leave it as it is, it will be required, but additionally we can already provide a message as a second parameter and here we can write username is required. In this case we will have this custom message. And again, we should not return this required or something, it is not an object, this is just a function call. Exactly the same I will copy paste twice, because we need required on the password and on our email. And we want to change strings here. Also we need required for our role ID, and here will be role is required. But additionally we want to validate an email, and in this case we don't need required, we need an email. And inside we are passing again field path dot email and we are providing in the object a message and here we can say enter a valid email address. So this is how we are using default validators in Angular signals form. But now it is important to remember, in the browser we can already click register and see that the field is required. We just throw something inside and click register and we are coming to on submit function. But it is not enough, we want to color with borders our fields when they are not valid. This is why let's jump inside HTML and do that. And for this on our input we can add a class. So we can write here class.invalid and here will be our logic. And again we are accessing here our form dot and specific field like username with round brackets because we are reading the value dot and we have here invalid field. So basically when this field is invalid and we want to read here form dot username dot touched so it is changed then we want to apply this class let's check in browser i am clicking on the username and click outside and now this field is highlighted with red again i really like typescript support here we don't have any question marks no weird getters just clear code let's do exactly the same on other fields so here we updated an email and now let's do this with password. Let's check in browser, as you can see all fields are highlighted. But it is not enough, obviously we want to render a message here. So let's render at least a message for the username, so you can see how it works. After the input I want to write an if condition, and inside we will have exactly the same logic. When our username is invalid and touched, we want to render a span with class error. And we can read our error from the input itself. So here will be our form dot username again with round brackets, it's a signal dot errors. This is how we're accessing our errors array. And as it is array, we want to render the first object with the message. And again, everything is typed greatly. Let's check in browser, we're hitting on username and we're getting a label username is required. So this is how you can render error messages for your inputs. But what about submitting form? Here we have on submit button and we can see our console log. This is great. You can just trigger here an HTTP call like we always do, like this dot some service dot register and you are throwing inside the whole model. Then you are writing either subscribe or then, depending on what you are using, then inside you are redirecting on success to some other page and if there is an error you are setting programmatically errors. This is totally fine and easy to do because everything is a signal. But you can also do it differently. And in order to show you I prepared here on the top the register new user function. 
As you can see, this is just a function which simulates an API call. Inside, we are throwing a registration form, which is a field tree, I need to import that, of register model. And it is just checking for username taken and returns for us true or false. Now, inside our on submit function, we can call a submit. And as you can see, it is coming from signals. Inside, we are passing our form and then an asynchronous function. This is where we will try to call our API. For example, I want to get a response and we are waiting for the function register new user where inside we are throwing our signal register form. First of all, after this, I want to console log API response, which will be our response and then check if we have a response then it means that we have some error messages. So we need to return an array with error messages. And inside we can pass an object with kind, for example, processing error, and the message, which is optional, for example, database down. And if we don't have a response, then we simply return undefined. So what is the point of this code? We are calling on submit function, and this is an asynchronous function, so it returns a promise. Our promise either returns an array with errors or undefined. Undefined means we don't have any errors, and when we have some errors, we're returning them like this. It allows us to automatically throw these errors inside our form without doing it manually. And now we can jump inside app.html and render them here. Let's say on the top, before all our fields, we want to render our server errors. We can use here for loop, and we want to render an error of our signal register form with round brackets dot errors. And these are our global errors. And inside our for loop, we can just render a span with class error. And here will be an error message. And again, as you can see, nice autocomplete. So let's reload the page. Here we're filling username, email, password. I'm hitting register. And as you can see, username taken false. So API response false. And we're not showing an error. Now I'm clicking again. It is true, and we're rendering on the top database town. So this is how you can render server errors inside Angular signal forms. Knowing new Angular features is obviously important, but if you're serious in becoming a senior developer, it is important to learn things like architecture, testing, prepare to pass interviews with algorithms, and so on. This is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp, where I help you to get to that level. So if you're interested, check the link for bootcamp under the video.